All right, so lots of super cool and interesting Windwalker changes coming and Monk changes in general coming in the War Within. Very, very excited, very interested and unbelievably happy at how they have handled the Monk and specifically Windwalker changes. And I've heard lots of good things about Mistweaver as well, so that's very nice. And I'm very hopeful that <laughs> Brewmaster and other tanks are also going to get changes because none of the tanks have gotten changes, in, changes in, uh, and I can show you in a little bit like some discrepancies or or something like that that uh, kind of hints at it. So first, <clears throat> Serenity removed. Holy moly, it's gone. This is honestly my favorite cooldown to use, but it was mainly just because Storm of Fire was so janky. But once I learned how Storm of Fire works and how to use it, it wasn't it wasn't that bad anymore. So uh, Serenity, while I really did like the way it like uh, it kind of worked with haste, but not really. But like it it's okay to let it's gone. It doesn't really promote the way that Monk is supposed to be played, which is like using energy and using chi. Like it takes away the two main resources and <laughs> and just gives you like 15% increased damage and the cooldown reduction. The cooldown reduction didn't even really matter. You just pressed some buttons, like you just press more rising sun kicks, but blackout kicks, especially with the tier set, already do pretty good damage. You don't really want to be skipping out on those and stuff like that. So Skyreach removed. I don't know why they did this because it was a choice node where a Tiger Palm is 10 yard range and dashes you to the target and gives you 50% crit for six seconds. That's a it's, it's one of my favorite abilities, by the way. But the other one is that it doesn't dash you to, to the target, so you can choose uh, which one we're here. But they took away the dash. I don't know why. I like I, I like the dash, I really like the dash, but uh. Okay, that's fine. I mean, we're gonna have mobility anyways, so bone dust brew removed. I think that this is this is so good. This is so good. It says Windwalker, so I assume like it's only Windwalker. We don't know what's gonna happen with Brewmaster, but uh, chances are it's also gonna get changed. We could probably see bone dust brew gone. Uh, and stuff like that, but this is more mostly about Windwalker and mostly just about Monk in general. So, and uh, this thing, I, I mean, I'll talk about that later, but uh, it's interesting. Uh, mastery buffed by 20%, and now baseline 12% more damage instead of like it's baseline better, and you get more mastery, more mastery. Like, Mastery is going to give you more damage than it used to. A really good change. I mean, we all know that Haste and Mastery have been very contentious and very strange for Windwalker for a very long time. And it, then I think they finally fixed it with this change. Uh, this change and many other changes. And uh, Spinning Crane Kick getting 20% damage. That's really good. And uh, this node changing and uh, blah, blah, blah. And, and like, uh, this is uh, f f is fine. This is okay. Uh, the damage part of Flying Serpent Kick removed. Uh, this may not seem like anything, but it is. It's uh, It takes away from your combo. Like this, um, how do I explain this? There are two talents that interact with this being damaged, uh, sorry, <clears throat> yeah. So there are two talents that interact with this, and that is uh, this talent right here. You can keep your combo strikes up outside of combat, and this talent right here. You can keep your uh, fist of fury uh, chance to uh, make your next fist of fury uh, invoke Sven, and uh, that's gone now. You can't use Flying Serpent Kick, if I'm understanding this correctly, and I think I am. You can't just Flying Serpent Kick outside of combat to keep those stacks up. And they're also taking away uh, Dampen, I'm uh, sorry, Expel Harm. So that's another thing. You, 
there is now no way outside of combat except for chi burst which you definitely don't want to do to keep your stacks up that's uh that's bad that's really bad that's uh i'm not i'm not i don't really care too much about the hit combo thing but the 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 oh, good lord man here we go invoke Sven. that's kind of bad because keeping that guy up uh like i don't know how many times i've gotten like 50 stacks of this thing like 50 percent 60 70 percent chance and then i do my fist of fury and it doesn't go off and then like there's some rp or something and like i'm able to at least maintain my stack so i go into the next fight with like 70 percent chance to invoke swen and and that's great because then i most likely will get it but uh now i cannot if i like i said i think it's just chi burst like you can't even rest in jade wind because it's now a passive hmm hmm you know all right all right kind of a damper but that's okay because there's so much good stuff glory of the dawn was just 25 percent chance now is a chance equal to your haste to trigger uh i predict that monk is gonna be uh, if you're going shadow pan i think you're gonna be going very haste focused build haste mastery i'm not sure if this scales with mastery that's a good point this probably scales with mastery so haste mastery or haste crit or haste verse i don't know or maybe just like hate haste main stat and then every other stat is like equal you know you want everything but mainly haste yeah windwalker wants mainly haste there's so much to go through here so this is really good like uh, so uh you know if you have 25 percent haste it's the same but 25 percent haste is a lot of haste especially at the beginning of the expansion that's gonna be kind of tough to get so so honestly this this honestly is kind of a nerf isn't that interesting but the thing is is that i don't see it anywhere in the never mind here it is <laughs> never mind so interesting okay this is whatever this is whatever i don't i'm not this is okay well i i can i can uh, yap about this a little bit this reduces the cost of tiger bomb palm by five the question is is that uh flurry for each 400 energy you spend you unleash the flurry charges blah, blah blah the question is like for example guardian whenever it gets a free charge of maul where it doesn't cost any rage you don't generate any uh there's a talent where if you spend rage you heal people so Oh, I have to click it. There's a talent somewhere here. Yep. After wildfire, after every 200 raids, you heal people. So when you get a free charge of, of rays or maul or whatever, that doesn't give you rage. So when you want to heal people at a critical moment, but then you get like a free charge of rays, you have to like spend iron fur or something uh, to, uh, to proc it because it won't proc it. And you can't. You know, it's a little strange. It's just a little bit strange, but that's what I'm thinking with this. Like, are you gonna be going like, uh, you know, you got 45. Let's just do it times eight. So okay, you're you cast it eight times, uh, Tiger Palm, because it's the only energy spending ability. Then the next one, 405, versus 50, which is what? Whoa, 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 whoa. 50 seven okay it's the same thing okay but then you're like wait is it no yeah you you get this one at the eighth so after eight after eight casts of tiger palm you get the flurry thingy to go off but with this talent it's every nine every nine casts of tiger palm or does this still count as 50 energy? That's that's the only thing we're talking about. Like, this could be a hidden nerf, in a sense. 
it's strange like you gotta you gotta keep this in mind but with conduit of the celestials that's not a that's not an issue i can see this way better with conduit of the celestials more energy max and more less energy cost mean, means uh more chi the more chi is the conduit is more about spending chi and shadow pen is more about spending energy so but they both scale with haste but i feel like shadow pen is going to scale much better with haste interesting interesting uh jade fire stomp has been kind of made irrelevant it's just a damage thing now like because it doesn't reset anymore there's no reset on it so i think people can stop being angry at this ability now i hope i hope they do so it doesn't reset anymore and and that's the only thing that's kind of really gone and but it also is it it does single target damage now but it just doesn't do a lot of damage that's the problem so like on average in the mythic plus that i'm i've been doing it does like on average 100k damage meanwhile like my blackout kick is doing like 600k average damage so i'm really just applying it for the damage increase which is fine but i have to pick up two talent notes and that means i have to pick up gale force which i might not necessarily always want to do or i have to pick up two talents into spinning crane kick which I might not necessarily always want to do, but I mean, Spinning Crane Kick does 20% more damage. This is going to give 30% more damage. Dance of Chi obviously, and you have a way to get Dance of Chi now, which is this one. Where after Whirling Dragon Punch, you can get a Dance of Chi This is kind of why they nerfed the proc rate by exactly 30 seconds, you know, hint, hint, nuts, nuts. So. I think you're actually going to get more, I don't know. But anyways, it's, it's interesting. Um, Mark of the Crane only applies to the primary target. Aha, see. Ah, this tiny little thing right here. Oh, man, you know. You know, you might not realize it, but essentially with Blackout Kick hitting two additional targets, it means that... Uh, Applying this, making spinning crane kick do more damage up to five targets was super easy because you just had to click like Tiger Pom on one person, then Black Kick on another person, and enemy NPC, another person, and then you have at least four stacks instantly. Like one, two, three, four, yeah, four stacks instantly. But this now you have to specifically Tiger Pom or Black Kick or Rising Sun Kick. You have to tap target, you have to switch, and you have to do it five times. So it only applies to the primary target. Oh man, <laughs> no, oh man. Uh, this is an interesting change. Uh, instead of, they essentially just took Power Strike and, and kind of, because it works the same, like Expel Harm gives you Chi. So they just made this cast Expel Harm instead, which gives you Chi. Every 15 seconds, Tiger Pump gives you another Chi. And it also casts Expel Harm. Expel Harm doesn't really do anything for Windwalker. The best thing about Expel Harm is what was that it was on a, a shorter global cooldown. And you could use it outside of combat to keep your uh, stacks up, keep your combo strikes up. And you could also use it to Tiger Palm, Expel Harm, Tiger Palm to quickly get full Chi, which I really like doing. It's a really, it's a really fun thing to do. So that's going away. So some complexity is going away, but other complexities are coming in. And uh, I guess, uh, hmm, I was very excited, but now that I'm really going deep into this, I'm still very excited, but there are things that I've gotten used to that I really like that are now not a thing anymore. So interesting. So teaching of the monastery stacking up to four times. Interesting because it's it's, it's three and it's like it, it fits kind of with the three, one, two, three extra kicks. But there's a big reason for this. And uh, uh, this is really cool, especially with this talent right here where it can stack up to eight times. But outside of Whirling Dragon Punch, reaching eight stacks 
or even reaching four stacks is very rare because it means you have to press tiger palm four times or eight times to 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 uh, not really any reason to do it i mean I guess now that you don't have Mark of the Crane primary target, you can save up your blackout kicks a lot. St instead, you're just Tiger Palm spinning in, in AoE situation. You're just Tiger Palm spinning Crane Kick, Tiger Palm spinning Crane Kick, you know, Rising Sun Kick. If it's a important target, you know, Strike of the Wind Lord, blah, 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 get that, all that stuff out of the way. And then, oh, I'm at eight stacks, time to ba 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 ba, you know. Plus your Fist of Fury actually now, which is amazing. I love it. Um, so baseline, aha, there you go. I think this is what they're talking about. It gives you four stacks of teaching of the monastery. Aha, okay. I, I should have read this. I, I think that's what they're going for right here. Now baseline gives you four stacks. Of teaching of the monastery? No, oh, 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 no, 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 sorry, I'm completely misunderstanding this. This is the Thunderfist thing where for each target hit, you gain auto attack boosts that do an insane amount of damage. Like, this is a very uh, under the radar, like, this thing is doing 5% or more of my damage in a Mythic Plus. It's a single target ability. It's it's your auto attacks. And your auto attacks are going to be super fast, which doesn't really matter. But uh, getting baseline four stacks, that's good. It, it just averages out. I mean, it was kind of crazy. Like, if you hit 10 targets, you got 10 stacks. Right? If you hit two targets, you got two stacks. Right? That's why it was so crazy. So, I mean, they are normalizing it a lot. But... I mean, it makes it very, very, very nice for raiding and very nice for single target situations. Which is what is what it... I mean, it focuses on that, you know, so then I, I, I'm i okay with it, you know. Tiger Bomb, Touch of the Tiger. Now it gives you 25%. Then, yeah, for one point, yeah. yeah. Transfer the power. Black again, rise and get increases damage. So Fist of Fury. Okay, so I assume the cast of Spinning Crane Kick is going to give you a boost. That's great. That's excellent. That's great. Uh, I cannot assume it's the damage portion because then you just press one Spinning Crane Kick and, and that's full power. <laughs> Cooldown is increased by 30 seconds, 230 seconds, and damage increased by 52. Oh, nice. Primary target takes triple... Wow, wowie, wowie, wow, that's really good. That's insanely good. Yeah, I mean, Whirling Dragon Punch is absolutely back. It is absolutely back. Spinning Crane Cake or getting eight stacks of the teasing of the. You get four stacks, but like up to eight stacks. And the teaching of the monastery, I mean, this is kind of weird, but I assume it's saying that the teaching of the monastery is damage. Rolling Dragon's Punch grants four stacks of teaching, and its damage is increased by 20%. Is it Rolling Dragon Punch damage, or is it teaching teaching damage? If it's teaching damage, that's a lot. If it's Whirling, that's not so much. Um, so this says damage to the first target struck. Hmm. Can you? Is that the target? Is that your target, or is the the target that's the closest? That's the question. Interesting. Yeah, whatever. But the very good changes. Very happy with the uh, going back to storm and fire focused. Very happy with uh, bone dust brew going away. Very happy with the location of everything. I'm very happy with the Jade Fire Stomp changes. I'm just just good. Just great. Everything great. Alright, so now let's look at the, the monk tree itself. 
start with just the monk tree, which is uh, this is whatever. I mean, you always have to pick this up no matter what. But the uh, the, the absolute oh wow, the absolute best thing about this tree can I not like get this in the middle? Do I have to be like this? Oh my lord, the side is terrible. Okay, I mean, you just have to be like this, okay? So, the great thing about this tree is that they have just taken a lot of two points and made them into one points. They have given us a lot of options. And they made it very easy for us to pick up whatever we need. Without having to go into some unnecessary stuff. Like, here is Detox. We can always have access to Detox. So, Tiger's Lust. Soothing Mist, the side, great, you know, this is for Mist Weavers, Mist Weavers will pick this up. And then you have like, obvious note, 3% damage reduction, always pick that up. And now you have access to everything, right? Do you want an AoE slow, 40 second, 40% 40 for 5 seconds slow? Sure. Do you want to boost that to 60% for 8 seconds? Absolutely. But if you don't, whatever. Do you want to paralyze, remove some raging effect? Sure. Your interrupt, obviously. Right. And dispel. Now I got still, I've got two talent points. Like, I feel like I picked up everything that is absolutely mandatory. And I still got two talent points that I can put wherever. Now, looking at the upcoming stuff, here's Chi Burst. I think Chi Burst is going to be very important, especially if you're going. Conduit of the Celestials, which is it's a major cooldown in that. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Somewhere around here. Ringwalker, Conduit of the Celestials. Oh, sorry, it's the it's a Brewmaster thing, Masters of Harmony. Yeah, cheaper does more damage, 100% uh, more damage. Anyways, okay, so not that important for Windwalker, especially because it doesn't even give you Chi anymore, which sounds bad, but they also, uh, I can't, can I find it? Chi burst. Can I write it? Uh, I mean, yeah, okay, no, no longer generates Chi, but there is a change where it does 160% more damage making it actually hit very hard it's a very nice ability but all right fair enough uh, you don't get it as windwalker however chi wave is a completely passive making a rising sun kick or wave fi so rising sun kick cast chi wave great i hate this uh, like chi wave and chi burst have been the, the the most useless abilities in the game forever Except cheaper, you. I mean, you can argue that you, if you want to keep the stacks up, you can cheaper. But I would not say that anymore because cheaper actually does really good damage. So I'm gonna pick up healing, or I could pick up out of combat movement speed. But yeah, sure. Let's just do that, and I can pick up whatever I want. Maybe paralyze or leg sweep cooldown reduction. I think that's really good. But let's just say I'm gonna pick up the role, increased role. I'm gonna become a, a role, role master. I want more role. But what about this? Don't you worry. So let's say we pick up Chi Burst. Obviously, pick up Transcendence because you have to. Personally, I don't use this ability at all. But uh, it's here, it has to be picked up. Fascinating Fist, Reson Resonant Fist. Oh, I've been saying that wrong for a long time. You have to pick it up. You have to pick up uh, defensives. Let's just say passive because we're lazy. Ring of Peace. I feel that like that's a very <laughs> mandatory ability in my toolkit. And absolutely mandatory as well is some rolls. I like the short roll because uh, you can quickly... Uh, it doesn't really cost much of a global cooldown. If you cast it while casting another global cooldown, you don't lose any damage. And here... You know, dodge chance. This this could be very interesting because you can stack this up as Windwalker, making you give it like after 
after 36 seconds, you have 100% dodge. So if there's any big physical ability that's ever going to happen, which, you know, tends to not happen in Mythic Plus or Raids, but if something comes along, you're going to dodge it. Some very interesting uh, potential here. So, but I don't really care about that. And uh, I don't really care about the Celestial cannot be slow below 90% of your movement speed. Eh, you know, if, 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 if the dungeons are slowing you a lot, then I mean, I, I would absolutely pick this up. But we'll see. This is a very good cooldown now. It says turns your skin to stone, like it doesn't tell you anything. And it has six minute cooldown. It's a little janky, but uh, essentially it is a two minute cooldown and it gives you 20% health and 20% damage reduction. So very good. And and Dampen Harm is now baseline for Brewmaster and not pick up. You can't pick it up as Windwalker or or Mistweaver. So definitely Fortifying Brew. You know, you're losing a defensive, but Fortifying Brew is much better now. And I feel like everything that I would feel like is definitely mandatory and optional has been picked up. And I have five talent points left to pick up. This is a terrible talent. I hate this talent. This can go away. I don't like it. Except maybe in Raid with uh, this talent that increases damage by 5%. Actually, not bad at all. But uh, I want to focus on Mythic Plus. So I want to pick up this. So I get 30 second par paralysis and I get 50 second uh, leg sweep. And leg sweep range? Absolutely. I really like that. It's very, very nice. And you know what? Let's go and uh, pick up Expel Harm. Does a tiny bit more healing and, and crit chance. And, uh, <laughs> and I mean, just go into Mythic Plus and see if it actually does something. That'd be interesting. And. Uh, and I don't really like this thing. I don't think that's good. But uh, cool down on Ring of Peace? Absolutely. Okay, so we're good to go. Have to pick up summon a White Tiger statue, which is no longer a summon. Although I did see that in here somewhere that it has been redesigned, now spawns a statue. But I also see that... Uh, Aha, okay. So I saw somewhere that it said like it has been made baseline. But it seems like it's just been removed. So you're not you're no longer summoning a statue. Excellent. Perfect. Right? The statue that does like 1.4% of your damage. And uh right, where was I? Here. It does like one like it does like one percent to three percent if you really min-max it. And it's really difficult. It lasts 30 seconds. It does tiny amounts of that. Now it's going to do all that damage over 10 seconds. Uh, and you don't even have to press it. Perfect. Excellent. They might. Uh, it would be nice if they increased the range of it. Like, like the radius. Pulsing radius. I don't know why this is still here. <laughs> I don't know why this is still here. And the funny thing is that if you change to like Mistweaver... It's still the wind walking thing. Like, I don't... Just delete this. You, you don't even have to put anything here. Just delete it. Nobody wants this. I don't, I don't understand. Are people seriously picking this up? I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I hate it. Um, all right, so uh, mandatory stuff. I don't think there's really anything except this. And I would say this is mandatory. So... Uh, I want to pick up both, and uh, this is really good, like 10% extra damage reduction and health, 30% damage reduction and 30% health. That's a huge cooldown now, or cooldown reduction. One uh, Makes it a one and a half minute. I think the damage reduction is going to be better. So this is mandatory, obviously. And here you go. Here's the avoidance that you need and uh, healing increase. So you get it now instead of it being an aura, but... I think that's completely fine. I don't think anyone's like, yeah, we definitely need a monk because it gives you 8% healing increase or whatever. It's really nice, but yeah, I don't think it's mandatory. And uh, Touch of Death, 
gives you 5% damage increase for 30 seconds and makes it a one and a half minute cooldown. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Really like the, the redesign in, in quotes of, of Touch of Death, which is that they just, just stop trying to make it a thing. Like, stop this AoE Touch of Death putting these nodes in such a weird place where you have to pick up something that is completely unrelated and and uh, absolutely terrible. This this talent node right here, absolutely terrible. Because if you miss, like, I don't know what they were thinking, but uh, whatever. So this is what I feel like is the most mandatory stuff. And you still got six talent points left, right? For me, in the future, it's going to be mandatory for me to pick up lighter than air because it's more mobility and that's fun. So that's mandatory. So picking up a remove all slow, hell yeah. Picking up a magic damage increase. Uh, I mean, uh, it's a physical spec. I don't know why this is here, but it. I think this will make your... I mean, it, uh, the, uh, the Celestials are doing, like, this is magic damage. This is nature damage right here. And your Invoke Swen is doing nature damage. Uh, I think these are just physical damage because they just copy you. You know, Jade Ignition, Rushing Jade Wind, Jade Fire Stomp. There's actually a surprising amount of uh, magic damage in a physical damage pack that brings a physical damage increase debuff. So that's interesting, but uh, it's whatever. And lighter than air, I think that's definitely mandatory, mandatory for me. So I, and I still got two talent points. Right? Maybe I want the defensive, and I maybe I want this strange uh, transcendence teleport thingy, or whatever. Five percent damage reduction at pretty much all times. Sure. Uh, maybe I pick up the uh, snare duration. Decrease. Maybe I pick up increased healing. Maybe I pick up slow roll. I can just go into like super slow roll over here. You know, be be better than uh, than frost mage. <laughs> Not really, but you know, whatever. It's an absolutely amazing tree. I'm very happy with it. Like th this is. Uh, I was planning on playing warrior. But the warrior tree did the opposite of what the Windwalker tree did, in my opinion. Absolute opposite. I'm not going to go into that, but... Uh, yeah. This is great. So. Alright, so the spec tree is looking amazing. Uh, even without shadow pan, which I think is going to be very haste focused. Uh, you're still gonna get a lot of haste. Uh, get a lot out of haste. So fist of fury, fist of fury. Uh, your extra chi, and uh, the first, almost immediately, some haste stuff like haste, fist of fury damage increased by hundred percent of your haste. Very nice. This is a huge buff to it actually, because. It already does really good damage, and now you can actually make it scale with haste. Uh, as the, like, multiplicatively more damage, right? And mastery is going to give you more damage, so, like, wow, wow, wow. So, and, uh, it incentivizes you no longer to reset your Fist of Fury. Fist of Fury does damage five times, and this increases the damage of your Fist of Fury by 10% for each hit. So on average, it's gonna do 25% more damage. So it does 100% based on haste. So if you have 30% haste, you can do 30% more damage. And on average, it does, uh, okay, I think it's actually, yeah, because the first one hit will not do 10% more damage. It's the second one hit. So in a sense it is so the first one is just zero then the next one is 10 percent then the next one is 20 percent 30 percent and then 40 percent so 100 percent more damage divided by five 20 percent more damage 
So on average, it's going to do 20% more damage. Uh, but the main thing about that is that it's going to make it so that you never want to cancel Fist of Fury. And that is a godsend. Like, I don't know why the Fist, I mean, Fist of Fury, sometimes Fist of Fury has really just been, I want to quickly spend 2 chi because of Serenity and the increased duration or or I want to get rid of my, like, I just want to proc furious when to make him appear you know like now it's a really good like this is our ib like this is gonna be like once we press it we're going and and it gives you auto attack speed by 60 percent for eight seconds this is because uh monk has never really scaled with auto attack like auto attacks have never been a thing for monk ever uh but now now it's a thing this is really just to make sure that uh because you're losing so much auto attack uptime with you know fist of fury because you don't auto attack while fist of fury and you don't auto attack while spinning crank kick so now you got you got more auto attack speed that's just to like equalize it now auto attacks matter you want auto attack you want them to matter and it makes also makes thunder fist discharge super fast and just nice but it doesn't really matter anymore because uh you can only stack it up to four like it just gives you four stacks and uh black eye kid does more damage let's skip that for now tiger pump does more damage okay never mind we're picking up black eye kick but there are some incentivizing things about having actually tiger pump do more damage it just a, it's just a number thing but you could honestly pick both of these up yeah, that's very strange to say, but you can actually pick up both of these later on if that's really something that you really want to go for, but whatever. Okay, uh, Flying Serpent Kick. Nice, very nice. Always love Flying Serpent Kick. You know, I like absolutely mandatory. This is just like a leveling stuff. You you always pick up all this. And, uh, and the Mark of the Crane, which you're going to have to spread by ourselves you know one by one which is you know fair enough fair enough okay but uh if you're going raid if you look at this you don't have to pick up this side like this is aoe this is aoe this is connected to this this is literally aoe this is also uh not probably not good for single target this is the tiger bomb increase that like 120 percent increased damage on tiger bomb maybe maybe so and you can pick up this black oak kick does huge amounts of damage like so you don't have to pick this side up in raid so that's great but we're mythic plusing we're picking that up this might actually be interesting because this is actually really good now because you get so much auto attack speed you're probably doing almost all the time 5% increased damage and your auto attacks are gonna hit like trucks but uh, this is probably gonna get nerfed I assume 180% of your attack power that's a lot I feel like this is I mean let's go into the mandatory stuff first stronger fire of course invoke Zen, of course I feel like this is mandatory because it's amazing in mythic plus and uh, we definitely want Strike of the Wind Lord, stuff like that. I think hit combo is going to be mandatory. It's just 6% more damage. Although maybe not anymore because you have no way of, of keeping this up uh, outside of combat or outside of downtime. So who knows? Strike of the Wind, wind Lord, I think that's good. Thunder Fist is great, although maybe not so much anymore because you can't get like 20 stacks of this thing or whatever not sure if there was ever a uh if if there was ever a cap on the stacks but you could stack a lot of it but there are lots of options and there are lots of ways to get to these options so that's i'm really happy about that uh second uh rising sun kick not that really really not that good it does no damage no damage worth talking about 
but I guess at least when you bloodlust, which is another thing, wow, I've, I've completely forgotten about the fact that we actually scale with bloodlust now. When you bloodlust, this chance is going to become like 60, 50, 60, 70, 80% chance, so that's really good. And Fist of Fury is going to hit like a truck in bloodlust. Wow. <laughs> wow. Really good. So, yeah, pretty good. Uh, cool normal rising sun kick, reduced by one second, damage of blackout kick increased by 10%. I don't think this is going to be that in good. Uh, combo strike. When you combo strike, the cooldown of touch death is reduced by 35. 0.35 seconds. Nah. I mean, if you actually calculate it out, I calculated it yesterday. And on like a on like a uh, 30 minute dungeon, right? Let's say you have perfect uptime, right? Like you're casting every single second, which you're not. So actually, no, let's make it realistic here. You have like 80% uptime in the dungeon. So, and maybe take away like 5% of that. So like, this is your real uptime. Like you have like 80% uptime in the dungeon because of downtime between mobs and stuff like that and RP. And let's say you're you're not pressing your buttons every single second, you're only pressing it 95% of the time. So, and, and it's so easy because you have a one second global cooldown. So that super simplifies things. Like these are your casts throughout the dungeon. And so touch of death, 0.35 seconds. So we just time 0.35. This, these are the seconds over a 25 minute, no, 30 minute run that you're reducing. So let's just, you know, let's make it a little easier to see. And um, the cooldown is 90 seconds. So on average, you're getting 5.3 more touch of deaths in a run. The only issue with that is that you can't always touch the death. So five extra touch of deaths throughout a run that could be if you if you pick up this talent where where you're not really focusing on the touch of death damage you're just focusing on getting the five percent increased damage for 30 seconds and now that could be more interesting but this also increases the damage of touch of death i don't know <laughs> you know uh this is much better in myth plus this is absolutely useless in in rate Unless it's some strange fight where something dies every, like, you know, whatever seconds. But, yeah, this is the, the amount you're reducing it by. And if I go, like, I think it's like this. No, the other way, I think. I think uh, now I'm in uncharted territory over here. Uh, you're getting 35. 5% cooldown no no this is the no never mind no 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 I don't know but uh, it's not nothing which is nice which is the problem with uh, another talent point here this one a abilities that activate combo strike reduce the cooldown on invoke swim by 0.1 second that is just not a lot and it desyncs your two minute cooldowns uh, from which is thankfully you have charges on storm and fire so you only have two cooldowns that really like but then you have like this 1.5 minute cooldown so maybe but i don't know it's very like you're probably just gonna it's gonna be a two minute cooldown it's gonna become a one one minute and 50 second cooldown instead like it's so like you have to cast 10 times to get one second cooldown reduction 10 times i don't know like oh, oh if you're casting constantly over two minutes that is 12 seconds over two minutes of constant casting you get 12 seconds off that's not so good so let's ignore the cooldown reduction stuff. Focus on the stuff that we know. I don't think this is going to be like cooldown reduction by one second. I don't think that's going to be. It's going to come down to how this right here plays. Because maybe 
or maybe not. I think it very depends on what your haste level is and how this plays. So we'll see. But now I have still five talent points left. Uh, personally, I think maybe I want extended duration on this thing. Uh, I don't think this is going to be very good. I'm not going to go for Tiger Palm damage, but I definitely want more Blackout Kick hits. Absolutely. And when you get a free proc Blackout Kick, black, the next Blackout Kick, which does not mean the uh, stacking teaching of the monastery stuff. It only means the first hit of your Blackout Kick, the one that, that you cast, not the extra ones. It's going to do 175% more damage. Yeah, I like that. Uh, but it does make that your AoE Blackout Kicks do this damage. So the first hit, that is. So three hits, three targets getting hit by... Yeah, that's pretty good. And that's Chi-Chi, that's just a great ability. And here, I mean, you got here, you got here, 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 you got here. So, like, every option is available, and I still got one talent point left. Um, maybe extra energy, if, if that works the way I think it's going to work, which is not in the good way, where you're going to have to cast nine times instead of eight times to... to Activate this flurry strike. Um, not too sold on that. So instead, why not just go for more energy generation, which is in a sense more haste, and it's a it's a multiplicative. Although it's just ten percent, but multiplicative more haste. And I really like the extra maximum chi. I really really like that. Like it's such a nice quality of life type of thing. The extra 20 energy? Hell, I mean, yeah, of course, why not? So I really like that one. It depends. Like, maybe the Rushing Jade Wind, when you cast Strike of the Wind Lord, is going to be super good. I don't think so. You might see that with the Conduit of the Celestials. There's a, the one right here where you get a Rushing Jade Wind. Uh, no, wait, sorry. Uh, Rushing Jade Wind when Swen is active. So we'll see. I hope they don't balance it so that this, you know, I want to go Shadow Pen. I really like the Shadow Pen stuff. So let's skip that one and uh, maybe pick up this one. I forgot about this one. This one, well, I would say honestly, the extended duration maybe it's not that important because the really good thing about Storm with Fire, because it has two charges, is that with it being two charges, you can always have. Sormer fire for each Swen. The problem with Serenity is that it's just one charge. So Serenity became a two minute cooldown because you have to sync it up with Swen and the 33% haste and your your trinkets, which are super powerful two minute cooldowns and everything. So you, you don't want to desync it. This way, now you got two charges. Now you can use two charges with Invoke Swen. And then every, I think it's like every fourth Swen, you can, like, and then every consecutive Swen invoke, you can always have one charge ready for it. And then, like, on the fourth or fifth or something like that, you can go back to having two charges of Storm of Fire with no cooldown reduction, spiritual focus, nothing, nothing like that. So, I mean, this is just perfect. This is amazing. This is the best. So let's go for this one instead. During Storm of Fire, Ryan's Sun Kick reduces Chico support by one. Essentially, honestly, you're getting Serenity right here. You know, the big thing about Serenity was the Chico cost reduction. So you cast Ryan's Sun Kick, and for five seconds, everything costs one less Chi. The Blackout Kick becomes free, and Blackout Kick reduces cooldowns by one second extra. And with your insane amount of haste, which uh, is what I'm hoping is that you're going to have like a lot of haste, uh, even better. And as a bonus, when you cast Storm of Fire, you get a reset on Black Rise of Sun Kick and you get two Chi. So you can always instantly cast Rising Sun Kick. Absolutely great. Absolutely amazing. I mean, perfect. 
I mean, I could even see like because Sky Touch is so good for fifty percent extra crit that you might start combat with just casting Storm of Fire, and just just for the two chi, and going straight into Rising Sun Kick, and then Sky Touch, for the Tiger Palm effect, and then going, you know, you get three chi, you pop your Invoke Swen, or you you kind of pop Invoke Swen before that. And then you go into the Fist of Fury, and then you maybe if you're going with the uh, uh, not Conduit Celestials, yeah, Conduit of the Celestials, sorry, no, Master Harmony, yeah, and then you go into this, which is just like a huge nook, fifty percent damage to, uh, crit crit chance with a huge nook nook nook. Wow, why, why can't I say that? Over four seconds, so yeah, exactly. Like so, you can Fist of Fury. Which is um, no wait no 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 that doesn't work because it's four second uh, duration on that. Um, so you just go like storm of fire, rising sun kick, strike of the wind lord because it costs one chi, and then I don't know but I mean look let's just. Options, just absolute options. I mean, it's great. It's so much stuff to think about. It's absolutely so much fun. I love it. And if anyone is watching right, like if anyone is at this point in the video, wow, that, that I'm surprised. Like I, I'm just, I'm just kind of making this for myself because I don't really expect anyone to be watching this stuff. But hey, 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 hey there, hey. Thank you, thank you for watching. Remember to no, I'm not gonna say that. Don't worry. Um, you got one talent point left before you have to go into all of this stuff. I want to put it. Uh, I kind of want to put it into this, just for the quality of life. Let's hope that these that it's you know not mandatory to pick up rushing jade wind and single target or something like that. You know, oh I hope so. So uh, thirty three percent haste for twenty seconds. Oh my lord. I cannot believe we still get this talent with us being haste focused now or or haste actually being a stat this is actually now now straight up wind walkers are actually getting bloodlust every two minutes that is crazy you might even see this actually being that really good because this is on charges so you can actually sync stuff up and maybe if you're because you're so haste focused you can you can actually get this down it's still just 12 seconds. I don't see it. I cannot see it being used. Maybe just for the increased damage on Swen. Maybe. Because Conduit of the Celestials might actually be a... Uh, who knows. But we're going to skip it for now. Uh, this is a strange one. I think this is just like... Oh, single target. Yeah. You know. So you don't have to go into like... Dance of Chi-Gi. And then... Blackout kick out the dance. I mean, you still want to go into dance of Chi because it's great, even on single target. It's just a fun thing to have. Uh, yeah, I I mean, yeah. So obviously we go for this. This is a uh, huge. This is great. Rising Sun Kick ends, you get crit chance on your Fist of Fury ends, you get crit chance on your Rising Sun Kick. Rising Sun Kick crits reduce the cooldown of Fist of Fury. It all works perfectly. Uh, I love Sky Touch. I never want Sky Touch to go away. It is the best ability in the game. Uh, I love it. Think about like uh, Waker's Manor on the tree boss where it spawns the roots. You just tiger palm those roots and then you just absolutely destroy them with 50% crit. What, like, it reminds me of the Shadowlands uh, Night Fae. Uh, the one where first time you attacked an enemy, you got 25% crit for like five or six seconds. Like, what a fun thing to have. Um, I want to be different and unique, and I want to actually go into uh, Jade Fire Storm. Let's, let's try and go into Jade Fire Storm. So let's go Spinning Crane Kick focused. Because I don't, like, this is, uh, I mean, this is, this is, this the wow! I'm really stumbling over my words over here. This is kind of strange, but it essentially is just you do ten percent more damage, uh, and then you 
and makes this a 30 second cooldown which lines up with everything re really nicely so let's pick that up uh, maybe because it says your abilities have a 100% chance to affect the target a second time at 10% effectiveness maybe that means stuff like glory of the dawn or like when you rising sun kick it 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 casts twice like you hit the target twice so you maybe have a double chance or or two chances not double chance but two chances of getting glory of the dawn if it works like that that's crazy like in bloodlust 80 percent chance you 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 rising sun kick and you get two chi back you know because it's got like 80 percent haste so 80 percent chance you know like that's crazy so jade fire stomp just just for the fun of it like why not oh no sorry this is the cooldown reduction okay so we'll see let's skip it for now i've got five talent points left i mean i already picked up like some really good stuff and uh let's say yeah you want the damage increase on jade fire stomp and uh i like i want the whirling dragon stuff and I think this is also a great talent, so because it, it, you do 175% more damage after every single dance of Chi-Chi, so maybe you want to focus on that. So Whirling Dragon Punch and going for the uh, guaranteed dance of Chi-Chi, which is, uh, uh, this is such a cool talent because, you know, teaching with Monastery can stack up to eight times, and that's going to be like a whole heck of a lot of kicks, but... When Dance of Chi Chi procs in AoE, it's crazy. Like getting this thing to proc in AoE is absolutely crazy. It is so good. So getting a guaranteed proc of Dance of Chi Chi is gonna be so nice. I want that instead. So, um, okay, I, I don't. I, I got a spoiler over here. I don't think Jade Fire Stomp is gonna be worth it because looking at this. I would really like to pick up this one. Like for Mythic Plus, I would really like to pick up this one. It kind of depends on how much damage Crackling Jade Lightning is going to do. So if we find it, it does 22% of my attack power. So 22% of my attack power. So 22.4 was it. And... Uh, it's going to give me a 2,000% increased damage. So times 20. Actually 21, because you got to include the original uh, attack power. So 470% attack power. If we take, for example, I mean, just the baseline Fist of Fury is doing 150. That's a lot times five times the uh, 54 divided by 100. So it's doing 400. So 470 versus 400 baseline, but then, you know, Fist of Fury does 20% more, more damage and it also scales with haste. And then there's a bunch of other stuff. So it's not a lot of damage. And Crackling Jade Lightning is... Um, where is it? Ba -ba -ba -bam, ba -ba -ba -bam. It's over four seconds. So, not that good. It's not that good. It is, it's nature damage. It's nature damage. So, okay, it's not physical damage. That's good. Um,. I'm not too sold on it, but I, I think it would be really nice to have something like this for focusing down one target and stuff like that. But I mean, you're not li really lacking in the focusing down one target. So, I mean, if you want to be picking up Jade Fire Stomp, I don't think it's going to, like, they didn't really buff the damage of Jade Fire Stomp. So, if it's just going to be doing average 100k damage, uh, I don't really care, you know. And if there's no like, uh, there's no way to keep this damage increase up. I don't see it being used, unfortunately. It's the interesting though, the five hundred percent increased damage on one target. That's that's interesting. That is interesting. 
but let's let's uh you know retire it for now because we definitely want to pick up Furio Swim. I think so. Uh because yeah, because you do like when he does his attack, everything takes 10% more damage from you. So it's 10% more damage when it procs. And 5% haste. And Swen also actually does a decent amount of damage himself. We still got two talent points left. And uh, that is crazy. So we can go for spinning crane kick. Actually hits like a truck. 30% more damage. That's insane. You could go for cooldown reduction. Or, or you could go for extended duration. So now you can finally pick this up. Right, you can pick up that, and you can maybe try picking up cooldown reduction on Invoke Sven. And you can maybe, oh, I mean, this is a really good one, obviously. Like, everything makes your spin, like, Fist of Fury, like, you're already picking this up in without Fist of Fury being this ultra buffed. So now that it's ultra buffed, and it's going to be doing 30% increased damage, holy moly. And maybe like one spinning crate kick, or maybe you go for the rusting jade win, or maybe you go for the cooldown reduction on strike of the Lin Lord. There is so many like so many ways to do this. It's absolutely crazy. Um, stuff that I didn't mention, like uh, you know the tiger palm. This might be good on single target, but that does mean you have to pick up Mark of the Crane, which is not something you want. And you have to pick up Blacker Kick does more AOE damage. You don't want to pick that up and. Uh, so this is kind of strange. So I, why isn't this more like here, like from this or something, or or uh, here or something? I don't know. Strange. But uh, since this is AOE and since you have teaching of the monastery, I think this you know it stacks up to twelve times, which sounds crazy, but like three hits, three hits. You know, Divide that by 12, you only, no, 12 divided by 3, you only need 4 st or 3 stacks actually of teaching of the monastery to fully stack this up. I mean, it could be, could be decent damage. What's the damage? What's the damage? What's the damage? Where's El Tigre Palm? Can I search it? It does 27. Okay, so 27, that's. 27 and let's take the let's go crazy on the damage increase and uh what is this uh 100 and 120 percent so times 2.2 so 75 attack power that doesn't seem like a lot <laughs> Strike of the Wind Lord, 300. Hmm. Did I do this incorrectly or something? That's it's kind of low. Eh, okay, whatever. Eh, whatever. That's fine. But, you know, this could be actually good with this. Rushing Jade Wind, you know. If this works the way it works, I mean, this could be much better for Conduit of the Celestials. Because this is. Because Tiger Palm is the only thing that does, so it's reducing that energy by 10%. Is the only thing that costs energy. So essentially, all of your energy abilities cost 10%, aka you have 10% more energy, you know, in a sense. You also, on average, have to cast, what was it, 10% less Tiger Palms to get more out of it. So yeah, that's pretty good. All right, let's look at the hero talent stuff. The hero talent stuff is uh, both very interesting and uh, so, I mean, I've been hearing some very mean comments about Shadow Pen. I don't think people are understanding. Like they see like for every 400 energy you spend, like, oh, wow, that sounds terrible because Monk is not haste stuff. Uh, they haven't been reading anything. So first of all, like, it's gonna hit pretty nicely. It's just passive damage, you know? That's nice. We don't really know, in a sense, how much damage this is gonna be. We're just gonna have to see. This one is crazy. You 10% armor gone, 
that's actually crazy. I think you're reducing your damage done by like 30, 20, 30, 40 percent. So taking away, you know, two, three, four, five percent of the armor is you do two, three, four, five percent more damage. It's pretty good on your physical abilities, but you know, it's very nice. It's uh, it's very cool. Um, you gain haste. So striking the same target five times within two seconds gives you one percent haste. That sounds kind of crazy, but spinning crane kick hits how many times? Like fifty-four times or something. Spinning crane kick hits four times in in one global cooldown, one point five seconds. But that's reduced by haste. So in general, like over one second or so, with your thirty-three percent haste. So with one global, uh, and it doesn't really matter because it's more, it's a global cooldown. So, so yeah. So uh, this is also if there are five targets, one spinning crane kick, boom, you got you got five percent haste. And we don't really know how long the haste is gonna last, but we're we're gonna see. And it's gonna overlap, so it's not gonna be like you stack it up and you just have ten percent haste at all times, but. Uh, it's gonna be very, very quick, very easy to get this amount of haste. Um, nice, you know, nice. And uh, flurry strike has a quick chance increase. Or this one is a little strange. Enemies who die within five percent of being damaged by a flurry strike explode. That is because uh, it's gonna take, like I said, eight, eight tiger palms for this to proc. That is a lot, right? There's also the problem of like uh, stacking this up. Uh, the, there's no cap on the charges, so that's no problem. Never mind. But you can actually control this. Like if you track this, you can control when the damage is gonna come. And 15% uh, more crit, I think it's just more stable. This. I mean, yeah, like I said, you can control it, but why would you control this on mobs that are already dying? You know, uh, don't think the the five second thing is a very weird. Like, why isn't it just like ah whatever? Well, what we're gonna have to see. It's probably not gonna be good. Uh, this one is nothing. I don't understand this. Like, vivify does thirty percent more healing. I mean, it, it does no healing at all, so I don't care. Uh, cheap Earth, Chi Wave, like Spell Harm, heal 20% of damage dealt. It's also very weird. I mean, okay, Cheap Earth is going to do a lot of damage. That's great. So that's the big one. Chi Wave doesn't really do any damage, right? It's like 1%, 2% of your damage. So, so that now that it's passive, it's just like, you know, you do 1% more damage or something. And... Uh, and the expel harm does absolutely no damage worth talking about ever. Because it heals for 120% of spell power. This is the wrong thing. But I mean, it heals for like 20k. And then 10% of that is done as damage. So it does like 2k damage. And you have like 1 million health. And the mobs have like millions and millions of health. So that doing 20% more that like, it's completely useless. So uh, yeah. I mean, this is I think it's just like a PvP thing. Like you pick up Revivify, instant cast Revivify, that's pretty good. Uh flurry strike increase your agility by 1% for six seconds stacking up to 20 times. Ole mole. So So the thing is that you you can't keep this up at all times because you can only like you can only spend energy through tiger palm and you have to cast eight tiger palms minimum to trigger this so eight seconds essentially because you can't reduce your global cooldown so if you spam even if you spam tiger palm eight times in a row you know you're not gonna get this but like 20% agility when this like procs with unleash all flurry charges and if you hit 20 targets you're gonna get 20% agility it's pretty crazy it's pretty crazy uh, 
Uh, Diamond Stealth by Fist of Fury and Cax Mask counts as double. That's, that's very nice. That's very nice. I would really like that. Uh, Fist of Fury does more damage. Cax Mask does more damage. I mean, doubly like that. Really like that. Uh, this one's kind of interesting. Like, when your dots are parry and attack, this is just like, if you're Brewmaster, you just pick this up. You just do, you just take 10% less damage at all times. <laughs> it's crazy. Or if you if you drop below, like this is the Windwalker one, who's, but it like, gives you 15% parry chance, but also 15% avoidance if you drop below 50% health. So you just pick this up. It's nice. It's whatever. You can't really control it. And if you're at 50% health, you're probably not in a position where... You know, I mean, if you're going to take 90% of your health as damage, suddenly, will this proc as a reduction of that damage or not? I don't know. Uh, it's whatever. You know, not much defensive capabilities in this, but you're already pretty tanky and defensive focused, so that's nice. Black Hell Kick deals an additional 20% crit damage, and the damage of your next set of Flurry Strike Increases the damage of your next set of flurry strike by 10%. So you just blackout kick once every 8 sec, uh, once every like 16 seconds, because every other Tiger Palm is gonna be like, even if you cast every other time Tiger Palm, you know, it, it's about every 20 seconds you're, you're probably unleashing these flurry strikes. So this is strange. I mean, I assume it's not gonna stack. So well, okay, interesting. But crit damage on blackout kick, now that's pretty crazy. Uh energy spenders deal an additional 10, 50 percent damage. Um uh, um uh, this one is completely like, the first part is completely useless for Windwalker, obviously. Maybe not, maybe not, but I think so though. This is more of a, a brewmaster thing where spinning crane kick costs energy so you use spinning crane kick a lot and it does great damage but the big one every 50 energy another one where if you have 45 energy cost reduction i wonder what's that what that's gonna do uh if if when you cast tiger bomb this is gonna cast or when you cast two tiger bombs it's finally gonna cast and then every tiger palm for five or ten or something you know what i mean Every 50 reduces the cooldown on Storm of Fire and Weapons of Order. Uh, that's a big hint, in my opinion, that the Weapons of Order is going to be reduced. I feel like they're going to change a lot with this. I mean, you got Bone Dust Brew, you got Invoke New Sao, you got Weapons of Order, you know, you got, <laughs> you got all these cooldowns. I feel like they're going to like put this all into Weapons of Order or something like that. I hope they are, because Invoke New Sao is completely useless. And I hate that. Like, I. Conduit of the Celestial, I mean, Brewmaster can't pick, cannot pick up Conduit of the Celestial, so um, we're going to have to see. But, yeah, okay, anyways, uh, this is a big one. This is, you know, cooldown reduction, storm or fire. Now we're talking, like, one second every Tiger Palm. Like I said, you're, you're maybe not, you may be pressing Tiger Palm maybe, like, eight times every 20 every 20 uh, casts, so eight times every 20 seconds, you know, that, so that's 24 seconds every, um, 24 seconds every 60 seconds, that's, that's a lot, you know, that's, uh, well, other way, that's 40, 40% 40 cooldown reduction, that sounds kind of crazy, especially, like I said, if you go fully haste focused you're gonna get so much cooldown reduction like and you want pretty much every other cast to be tiger bomb so maybe increasing the damage of tiger bomb it's not a bad idea <laughs> we'll see you know and weapons of order that's crazy like oh weapons of order is an insane ability for for brewmaster absolutely crazy powerful uh let's see and the big one is every 10 flurry strikes become infused with the wisdom of the wall for 20 seconds. This is. I don't know what the hell this is. Every 10 flurry strikes. So I assume that's like 400 energy unleashes a flurry strike. So every 
10, so every 4,000 energy spent, you get, you become like BFA last season, corruption, everything. Am I understanding this correctly? Like every 4,000 energy after 10 flurry strikes, you get the biggest buff. Crit damage 30%, effective mastery 25%. Dodge and crit by 25% of your versatility bonus. Flurry Strike does 100 attack power as shadow damage to, to all uncontrolled enemies. I don't know what that means, but like 20, 30% crit damage, 25% more effective mastery, which is not, sounds a bit weird, but if you have if you have 10% mastery, this means you're going to get 2.5% increased damage on your mastery because it increases the effectiveness of mastery. This might actually be more multiplicative with anyways anyways that's strange but you know and crit chance for 25 percent of your versatility uh, this is the kind of thing that makes me think like you might be haste focused but you kind of want every other stat to be equal like you want five thousand haste and then you want two thousand hey uh, crit two thousand verse two thousand mastery or something like that who knows uh interesting interesting for sure kind of strange though like every 10 flurry strikes or or is this like uh once you do damage equal to 10 percent of your like once you get one flurry charge and then like you stack up maybe 10 flurry charges and then you unleash all the flurry charges you get this like each flurry charge is a flurry strike i don't know we're gonna have to see but this does also mean that you're gonna have to be tracking this a lot like you're gonna be have to tracking your energy and your chi and your furio suen and your cooldowns of course as well and your cooldown reductions and then you're also gonna be have to tracking how much energy you've spent and your flurry charges and then maybe even if you pick up this then you definitely want to like keep an eye on this because if this is crazy damage you want to be making sure you're casting your flurry strikes when everything's like super low on health and then bursting happens in the mythic plus and everyone hates you <laughs> like who knows so i mean i'm i'm more interested in the shadow pantry I, I i almost didn't even look at the comp build of the celestials i for some reason thought it was going to be like masters of harmony or Windwalker, but no, that's not for them. They get the Conduit, which is like huge nuke. You just do insane amounts of damage on a 90 second cooldown. Uh, I wonder how this is gonna interact with Storm or Fire. I wonder if this is gonna interact with your mastery or versatility or whatever. Um, it's gonna be split damage, but that's fine because it does 12, 1200% of your attack power times 9 and it's also nature damage not physical damage and and it seems to be that it also heals as windwalker i don't think so though because when i saw this on mistweaver they were only getting the healing portion they were not getting the damage portion so i assume windwalker only gets the damage portion um crazy crazy this might also make it so that you want to pick up these cooldown reduction stuff like you know swens bond and uh so that it syncs up a little bit better so maybe you're not going to get 90 seconds exactly but you're going to get like uh 100 seconds or 110 seconds but uh, i don't know why this can't be a, just be a two minute cooldown but whatever tiger palm uh-huh more tiger palms but there's no more no way to do like additional tiger bombs this is just it, tiger bomb damage so tiger bomb casts have a chance to make swen show up and, and do a claw attack and heal near nearby alice this is this is the thing about conto with the celestials that i'm very interested in is that it could be an insane healing tree for windwalker like you're doing great damage you're also doing great healing because this, this is also mystery so I wonder if this is just going to do damage for Windwalkers and just going to do healing for Mistweavers or both for both. I don't know. And when Invoke Swen is out, it's going to be increased. 
probably gonna be like increased by double so 30 percent chance i don't know maybe who knows uh spinning cranking and fist of fury does does more damage nice uh teaching of the monastery has, uh, this one's kind of cool though teaching of the monastery has a 50 percent chance to not be consumed n each charge not to be consumed so maybe you go for the eight charges of teaching of the monastery and when you cast this you like retain like three or four or five or whatever charges and tiger palm damage is increased because why not <laughs> interesting uh you know but i'd probably just go for the fist of fury and spinning crane kick uh let's go here uh russian gain russian jade wind so this does only damage for windwalker so it's not going to be healing people but uh i mean rushing jade fin for 20 seconds and then eight seconds with your your uh, fury of swen which is also going to work really well with curse of the white tiger that's pretty cool and again this is very focused on casting tiger palm like tiger palm is very important and this is also very chi based if i remember correctly so again more chi aka casting more tiger palms so Russian Jade and Spinning Crane Kick has a chance to summon Chiji. Too quickly rush to the dark. So thankfully you don't have to pick up Russian Jade Wind because it's three procs per minute. So you're always pretty much gonna get three procs per minute. So and Spinning Crane Kick is gonna do that for you. But still in single target scenarios, you're probably wanting to pick this up because the only times you can cast this is like that's a Chi-Chi, and you only get 1.5 per minute. This is 3 per minute. It depends. Maybe it just doesn't do enough damage, so you don't really care. Oh, yeah. Uh, has a chance to rush to the target and deal damage to the target. Interesting. I wonder if this is, like, different on Mist Reaver. Yeah, it heals on Mist Reaver. Interesting, interesting. So I guess maybe they're gonna fix this because like I said, this only heals on Mist Reaver from what I saw on the alpha. So okay. Yeah, okay, it does damage. After Swen assists you, your next blackout kick summons new Sao and he stomps and does damage. That's great. Probably cool visuals. I hope it's cool visuals. Uh consuming 30 Chi. There's the Chi thing, there's the haste focus stuff. Causes Yulon to decrease the cooldown reduction on Fist to like Rise and Cave, Fist of Fury, Striking Windlord, and Whirling Dragon Punch by double for eight seconds. So here you have Serenity. This straight up is Serenity, honestly. And again, you wanna have lots of Taekwondo, but this is also something you actually have to track now. You have to track this. I mean, you have to track this, in my opinion. Um, so. Absorb fuel from fortifying brew, eh, whatever, you know, every two minutes or every 90 seconds, this kind of incentive is taking the cooldown reduction then, so that's nice, but uh, heal for 10% of your max health instantly when you activate the celestial conduit and you receive 15% less damage for its duration. Holy moly, this is invoke swen, no, sorry, a celestial conduit, this, okay, so for four seconds casting it and eight seconds afterwards you take 50 percent less damage yeah crazy really good moon speed increase uh during celestial conduit that's nice because you're like channeling it so it's nice to be able to move around and for three seconds after i mean sure why not you know cool uh this is the thing from uh shadowlands torcast where uh, uh yeah, so essentially you just get 3% haste crit chance worse or mastery, whatever. Who cares? Or Jade Fire Stomp. Hmm. Increases the damage of your nice rising sun kick once every eight seconds. So this is a mystery we were thing. Because uh, Jade Fire Stomp is much cooler and much more interesting and much more fun on Mystery Weaver. You really like this ability, especially in Mythic Plus. So just take the 3% stat. Whatever. And Celestial Count, this one's strange, like, Celestial Count with can be recast once during its duration to call upon all of the August Celestials to assist you at 200% effectiveness. So, 
and this automatically casts at the end uh, when it expires. Uh, interesting, I guess, but whatever. So what's going to happen is that Swen is going to appear. He's going to do 250% attack power times times 3. Because 200% more damage means that you get... Oh, sorry. So 200% more damage is not times 2, it's it's uh, times 3. So 250% attack power. And then you get, you know, you get this amount, 200%. So plus 205 of the original, 750. And this is going to hit as hard as a, a baseline Fist of Fury. And then Invoke Swen is also going to appear and do 300% attack power. I assume just instantly, or do you have to blackout kick then afterwards, maybe, or something? And I don't know how this is gonna work. Like this is gonna, this is kind of strange. So, so, so after Invoke Swen, you get New Sal, and I assume this guy just appears and does rush rushes in and does damage. Okay, so that's whatever. So, um, call upon all of your August Celestials. So I don't think it's going to call upon, like, I don't think it's going to cast Invoke Swen when he casts this. But it's going to make this guy appear and just slash at the enemies and then disappear. Um, the question is, is it going to make New Sao appear from him? Because he's going to obviously just appear. Because it's all of them, all three of them, four of them. I'm not talking about. There's also Yulon. Where's Yulon? Okay, I guess he doesn't. I guess he doesn't do anything. But okay, uh, so stomp and then slash and then rush, and then maybe another stomp from this. No, what am I talking about? This is not casting it. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can cast Celestial Conduit again to do more damage, essentially. But all of your cool Celestials are going to appear and, and, and uh, help you in combat. Cool. Nice. And you don't even have to cast it. You can cast it at the end. It, it automatically casts at the end, so I assume it's not going to like cost a global cooldown or anything like that. That's fine. That's cool. That's actually really good, because casting this is going to do so much threat damage. So casting this at the end is gonna be nice because then you can you know you can uh, you can for, <coughs> for example if you cast this at the start or something like that you can wait for some trinket proc or something like that and then cast these you know stuff like that so overall holy moly this is absolutely amazing there are like I said some things that might be a little different like you're not going to be able to probably not going to be able to keep up hit combo or fury of swen between pulls because there's nothing you can do except just chi burst because flying serpent kick is not gonna reset your mastery or you're gonna have to just spinning crane kick so you're gonna have to make sure that you end combat with uh, fists of uh, with with extra chi so you can spin in crane kick and you might want to like go tank go 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 and then like start with chi burst into the next mob pool to keep it going or something like that so maybe i at, at most you only really need to cast two abilities to reset your to to keep up fury of swen so so i think that's okay all right you just keep one spinning crane kick at the end of the pool and you just chi burst at the start of the next pull. It should be good. Chi burst is less important for Windwalker because I mean you you don't have the the Masters of Harmony that increases the chi burst damage by a hundred percent. But I mean chi burst is going to do a hundred percent increased damage from what it does now. And for me on Brewmaster, it did like thirteen thousand damage. So increasing that by 160% is going to be 34%, 34k damage. Just baseline, 34,000 damage 
on five targets 170k this nature damage is not reduced or anything like that and it's increased by your crit it's increased by reverse and it's increased by your mastery so when i tried it on the dummies it was doing like like 400k or something crazy like and that's just five targets and that's also like you also get 52 percent more healing as well <laughs> it's a i guess it's a really good button for both healing and damaging for all three specs but i feel like most people are probably just gonna pick up you know chi wave and whatever it's just a passive blah 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 you know but the fun thing about this at least because there was a thing with uh brewmaster where they used chi wave to pull is that you can proc this with vivify so maybe as a brewmaster you pick up instant vivify because it's, it's not really like you don't really lose anything like you just go like here here and maybe you know oh i don't use ex extra distance on chi torpedo and i don't want the slow so then you just you know there you go like <laughs> you know and you can pull with chi wave i hope because i hope you just target an enemy and then you cast vivify on yourself and that makes chi wave appear on them well that's interesting like because that's probably just gonna end up pulling extra mobs or something so yeah like i said it, it, there's so much to test there's so much to go over there's so many questions i don't understand why this can't just make it so that like why can't this just be like and invokes when cooldown redu reduced by 30 seconds that would make it crazy good like make con celestial conduit every storm of fire and swen now and then you're picking up 90 second trinkets instead of two minute but i i still like two minute cooldown based i think that's great so that's also why maybe i want to focus much more on shadow pan over this i don't really like the idea of having some oh an extra button you have to press and it just does damage there's not much in this hero talent tree that does anything but like oh what are you talking about shadow pan is like completely passive yeah but it makes haste absolutely crazy good and you have to it's not passive you have to track this so you have to like it's more minimaxing like okay okay i'm at like i'm at like 300 energy or well not 300 240 energy or something like oh i'm at like 240 energy two more casts okay sorry way more casts <laughs> oh 50 it costs 50 energy what am i talking about so I'm at like, oh, I'm at 3650 energy used. Next one is going to trigger my flurry strike. So maybe I want to cast everything else. I want to stack this up more. I'm like 10% of my max health. Gives me a flurry, flurry charge. Okay, I'm going to whirling dragon punch into uh, spinning crane kick, into blackout kick, into rising sun kick. And then I, I want to summon stormer fires and I want to strike with the wind lord. And then another rising sun kick from storm of fire and then i got like uh fist of fury back up and then a fist of fury and now i press my tiger palm again and flurry strikes like now i got a trinket proc now i got my storm of fire now i got 10 percent increased damage from in work swen and now i want to do it now i want to cast the like ability or even like i said if this is four thousand energy or just four hits of flurry charge which i don't think is gonna be because maybe that's just sync like on one target because i mean if if you hit 10 tar targets with only one flurry charge you get this instantly i think this is gonna be like four thousand energy which is crazy <laughs> that's absolutely crazy like that that's four four thousand it's uh 80 casts isn't it so yeah, it's 80 casts of Tiger Palm specifically. Tiger Palm. So every other cast is Tiger Palm at minimum. Like, and you're never doing that. You're not never like Tiger Palm, you know, spinning cranky Tiger Palm. Like, you're not casting every other cast that's not Tiger Palm. So maybe, maybe on average, like every, let's say every third cast is Tiger Palm. So 160 plus 80 is like, you know, every 240 seconds you're going to get this. Wisdom of the well. Wall. Well, wall. 
place them on the wall. So it's not a lot of uptimes. This has to be kind of crazy. But it is crazy. Even just the 30% crit damage is enough, right? Effectiveness of mastery, nice. You even get dodge chance? Like, why not? This is also Brewmaster, so yeah, I gotta keep that in mind. This is also Brewmaster. And crit chance of your oh, of your worst, of course. I forget about that part. So I mean, like a ten percent worse, you're just getting two point five percent dots and two point five percent crit. Eh, you know, eh, it's not so good. And I kind of predict that you're gonna be running like like I said, I uh, predicting uh, more hoping. I'm hoping that we're gonna be running haste focused build. Cause that sounds crazy good to me and haste works so much better with storm stormer fire because you want to be casting tiger bomb you you're casting tiger bomb inside of stormer fire and stuff like that i guess the only thing i'm kind of oh man that's kind of lame is that you can't really tiger bomb uh expel harm tiger bomb anymore but maybe you can oh man oh yeah, yeah 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 okay now i'm cooking over here because this counts as damage so if this counts as a cast that gives you extra chi maybe you can tiger palm tiger palm when this procs because it tiger palm and then it expels harm counts as mastery hit so you can tiger palm again uh if it works like that which in no way and no there's no way it works like that but if it works like that oh my lord that is so good for the opener of wind walker that makes it so nice because i really like the tiger palm expel harm tiger palm it's so nice it feels so good to do to do it like that we'll see we'll see i think that's everything i don't think i want to go into anything else i mean brewmaster i am really hoping that uh, yeah okay so quickly i think there's gonna be big changes to brewmaster because why like clashes over here you can pick up class over here by the way another form of interruption that people aren't actually understanding they're only looking at the root but the thing is that the the the, the guy that you're targeting the enemy that you're targeting is forced to move towards you interrupting its casts of whatever so you got paralyze you got ring of peace you got aoe stun and then you also can have clash you got four forms of interruption that are easy to use and then you got spear hand try like and then you got your interrupt and you know like yeah clash can actually be really good on mist weavers and wind walkers just for the extra interrupt right okay so yeah so clash is still here this is the beta stuff so like this has been completely unchanged class is still here and there was something else here like like the cooldown reduction of 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 uh weapons of order instead of it like invoke new sao or something like that so i hope they buff this because this is absolutely useless it does absolutely no damage and it like reducing you the damage you take from stacker by 25% essentially, because he takes the 25% stagger, it doesn't matter at all. Stagger damage has never been the issue for Monk ever. It's a three minute cooldown, and you have to pick up two talent points to to get 0.5 second cooldown reduction on that every time you get shuffle, which is not like you do get a lot of shuffles, but it's not like crazy amount. Like I really want to go with like bone dust brew, like take that away, take it away. Like and just make them do more damage and like you know fortifying brews not fortifying brews like here and it's more interesting and like like take away okay yeah, yeah yeah yeah, i'm not going into this but i think there's gonna be big 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 changes to brewmaster and uh prot warrior i think as well although i think they no yeah exactly like they did changes to all of this but they haven't changed any of this for but they have changes for like fury and arms but not for prot so i'm thinking prop warrior brewmaster maybe some nurse to engines maybe maybe a little couple of nurse to engines uh, 
and and it's it's been confirmed that Blood DK is gonna get big changes. Oh, thank, thankfully, thankfully, Frost, Unholy, and Blood are gonna get nice changes to the class three, and and Blood is gonna get like they're gonna get. I hope they get the same thing as Monk, the Monk treatment of like, wow, this is so much more interesting. This is so much better. This is great, just great. And Guardian is probably also going to get some changes. Not a lot of changes, but I think they can freshen up this side of the tree. The the whole Fury of Elune, the Elune's Chosen versus the uh, Kitty Cat uh, Druid of the Claw. Uh, this is the Druid of the Claw, obviously. This is the Elune's Chosen, obviously. But like this like two talent point damage reduction, Moonfire, Arcane that lay it in each big like a, a nice big update like this got although i really don't like the changes to this at least still have to like go to town because okay I'm, I'm i'm rambling too much this is about monk monk is great and i heard that mystery Weaver is somehow even better because like it's amazing at the moment in in season three currently of dragonflight and it's probably gonna be also be super amazing in season four even though it's getting healing nerves because every single healer is getting healing nerves, and that sucks. But I heard that they they made even better changes. <laughs> it's crazy. So I am I am hoping to absolutely everything and all of the above above that Brewmaster gets these changes, please. All right, see you. I can't believe if you're listening to this right now and and you're still here, like like wow, that is a or, or if you skip to the end, I mean okay, fair enough, but. If you're still here listening to this, wow, I, I, I applaud you. Thank you for watching this all the way through. And please tell me if there's something that I can change from the way I do this. But Because I really like going super deep into the theorizing of this stuff. And if people really like the way I do that, then tell me. Because I would really like to make more of this. Even though, wow, it's... I can't believe how streamers do this because talking for this long is like absolutely destroying me. Oh my lord. Okay. Thank you. See ya.